Sega. Hello all and welcome to another video for Total War Warhammer. I am Joey Dalton and I'm joined by Darren McNally in this Let's Play. Darren, what are we doing this time? So we're playing as the Chaos Warriors in this Let's Play as we have a very special announcement to make. That's right, we do. The Chaos Warriors race pack will now not only be free to you if you pre-order, but it will also be free for everyone who buys the game in the first week of release as an early adopter bonus. Yep, so if you have pre-ordered already, you'll be able to pre-load the game to be the first to play it on May 24th, but if you hold off, the Chaos Warriors will be available for the first week after launch free of charge. So if you want more details on that, check the uh, link in the description or check out the Total War Warhammer Steam page. Right, so we're fighting at high pass and uh, we're f playing as Chaos as we mentioned and we're against the Dwarves and just this lovely unit here, these are the Dragon Ogres. Handsome. Um, very cute, very little, very small in comparison to the Dragon Ogre Shagoth. Wow. Um, so Look this is lightning. Yeah, it looks really good, the kind of electrical pulses around him, it looks really, and he sounds really good as well, actually a real deep bass to him. But that, he's dwarfed in comparison compared to Kolex Sun Eater, one of the legendary lords that you can play as in the uh, campaign if you're playing as Chaos. He actually has a bonus for having uh, Dragon Ogres and Shagoths. Uh, he can recruit them at 15% the cost and 10% the cost for the Dragon Ogres. That is awesome. His uh, so, weapon is called Star Crusher as well. What a name. Yeah, the Sun Eater and the Star Crusher. He is. I mean, he's, as we'll see in this playthrough, he is really, really powerful. And having those guys in your army, it's actually really good bonus to have to have any kind of upkeep um, have any negative upkeep on them because they're quite expensive they're quite rare so to have them in this army like this you know you're dealing with a high tier powerful army we've also got at the back there the chaos warriors with great weapons and the uh, chosen here with great weapons as well uh, flanked on the left we have a, a, a sorcerer of the metal variation or the metal lore so chaos warriors they can actually play with different sorcerers of different lores I think Metal, Fire and Death are some of the ones. Um, we also have a Manticore flying up there. And down here we have the Chaos Knights with Lances. You're going to be doing some sneaky tactics. Yeah, so the, we're actually fighting uphill on this battle. It's going to be quite tricky. Um, and uh, we have the Dwarven Army up here on top of the hill. So my, it's not really sneaky tactics, but obviously they don't have cavalry themselves. So we can you know, bring our cavalry around up behind them on the hill and hope to do some flanking charges. So it should be good. Well, you have a lot of fast units compared to the Dwarves who have practically no fast units at all. They are really slow. Even the uh, Slayers, which we'll see in a minute, in their um, info stat panel, it says fast brackets for a Dwarf. <laughs> Yeah, oh, these guys here are really cool, the Iron Drakes with the Troll Hammer Torpedoes, and they're meant to take down like large uh, monstrous infantry, so they'll be good against the, uh, the Shagoth and the Dragon Ogres, as well as the uh, Cannons, the Slayers in the back, and the uh, Flame Cannons. Um, it's worth mentioning, this is just a little quick debug mode to look at their army, they'll actually deploy a little bit different to this, um, but I just thought it'd be interesting to see what we were up against on top of this hill. Um, so here we are, this is the kind of gameplay, so obviously we're not playing this right now, we're looking back on the gameplay that I captured at the time, but to kind of appease the people who want to see cool zoom-ins and cool cinematic shots, I've also interlaced the video with the replay shot, so for those who don't know, in Warhammer, after a battle is done, you can view back the replay, and uh, you can simply hide the UI by pressing K, and that removes the flags in the gameplay UI, and then we're allowed to put the camera down and see the gameplay as it unfolds, both from a gameplay and cinematic perspective. The timeline stays the same, so what you're seeing is all in real time as well. Um, so hopefully that will let you guys have a real nice zoom in of all the action and some of the higher up gameplay choices that I've made. Some of the more brutal face punches I know you all want to see. Yeah, so, so we saw some dudes fly back uh, all the way down the mountain getting hit by a cannon. So already the Dwarven Artillery is firing on me. They're perched a little bit further up on the hill than they were uh, in the debug mode. And I'm um, just, yeah, I'm just sending everyone forward. We just have a long plodding march up this hill until we get there. And the, the snow on the hill does slow your troops down, so they are running as fast as they can. You can see them just getting thrown back. And I, I really have to try and take as, as few losses as I can until I get there. Don't want to send them all up by themselves either. I'm trying to keep them all together. Um, so I have to kind of keep a steady march with them as well. So do you have any kind of strategy for this? Because you, you have some making up to do for your uh, win-loss record for us, Darren. That's true. Well, I did beat Lionheart, so, you know, yeah. I won the last one. Okay. But in, in terms of this battle, um, my strategy generally is to move forward with a kind of a double line, split into a single line, and then have cavalry go around the edges. And I've concentrated all my monsters infantry kind of on the flanks as well, off the infantry. So I have Chaos Spawn over on the right, which we'll zoom in a bit later as well. And I have my Dragon Ogres on the left. 
and so hopefully we can just kind of punch through and then have the cavalry come around. It's just a massive envelopment uh, as long as my centre holds. I love all the uh, dwarf and ruins kind of scattered around the battlefield as well. Yeah, this map is really beautiful. It's set up in the kind of Norskan regions near some dwarven Karaks. So I like to think that, you know, they're they're kind of holding back the chaos invasion as best as they can before we move in on their, their Karaks, I guess, up north. Um, so it's worth mentioning that Kolik is fully upgraded here. In custom battle, um, legendary lords are fully upgraded. So all the spells he is active, that means he's like fully upgraded, fully tacked out on a skill tree. Um, yes, one of his uh, quest battles is actually to get um, Star Crusher, which he doesn't start with when you play in a campaign with him. So as you, as you can see, he does have it here. Right, so there we go, the Shagoth has made its way through, the Dragon Ogres are coming in, the flame cannons are firing in the background, and uh, the, the Iron Breakers are throwing their blasting charges towards them as well. So straight away it's like a massive ditch fight up there. The Slayers are digging into my guys as well, which is going to be a bit rough on the monstrous infantry. Um, but Joey actually hasn't seen this battle yet at all. She's watching this back for the first time, so I've got some surprises in there for her as well as you guys. I'm excited. So we can see that they have a gyro bomber as well. Um, now what can take down a gyro bomber? Manticore is pretty good, yes. so we'll send that after it. Hopefully it'll do good. Uh, we'll catch up with that later. Um, but things are going pretty well. I mean, he's Kolik is just smashing through dwarves at the moment. He's you know he's taking a bit of damage. They're throwing a lot of things at him. I just used a final transmutation there from my wizard, uh, which is a direct damage spell, and I actually overcast it, uh, which kind of increases the amount the cost it does, but gives me a 50% chance of miscasting. Um, basically, that's just like a direct damage spell that lasts for about 20 seconds. I love the flavour text for it is the wizard unleashes a hail of magical energy, transmuting his foes into unliving golden statues. It's, it's, it's quite brutal. Yeah. <laughs> That's mean. So here you can see the chaos spawn, the blasting charges are absolutely devastating. They have so many of them, the iron drakes. And there's some miners units as well, miners with blasting charges that can throw them in as well. Um, my manticore's going to town on the gyrocopter Whoa. and it's actually broken and it's running away. We've got a beautiful charge here from the Chaos Lances as well. Chaos Flying Knights. dwarfs, yeah. what a beautiful sight. It's funny because Kolek is so massive, especially compared to a dwarf. <laughs> um, they're very, very brave and hardy folk to, to even attempt to take them on. So they have quite a few Slayers units, which is kind of bad for you in, in a couple of ways, because you've got some larger units in there. Yeah. So avoiding them is key, I would say. Um, just that spell that's going off there, that is the uh, Gehenna's Golden Hands. It's a Vortex spell, lasts about 13 seconds, and it costs 9 wounds of magic. Uh, again, that's the Metal Sorcerer, just hanging back, casting spells where he can. So he summons the spirit of Gehenna's Metal Hands to hunt down his prey. Oh, what was that? So that's the Blasting Charge, it's just going off in the distance. Ooh. They just launch them at, at blobs of infantry and just completely wreck them. Um, so and my Manticore came down for a nice charge. That's it? Yeah, I've... <laughs> even that, it's fine. You're I'm not going to well. lie, I kind of do really well <laughs> against these guys. We just like push oh. it, lay into them, kind of like a constant onslaught. This is a very high tier army. Now the dwarves, their army costs the exact same. They have a lot of troops, um, but they just didn't hold very well. And my spells kind of went off right, uh, so I got kind of lucky. I broke their gyro bomber. The gyro bomber is actually coming back in here to make a quick run on my Chaos Knights. Oh. He actually comes in from melee, knocks a few off, and then starts frantically dropping his bombs while my Manticore chases him down. Oh, that was that was clever. Yeah, so here he is just going along the line, literally dropping the bombs. You can see them actually coming out of the back. My Manticore just isn't fast enough to get him. And I always thought it was really, it'd be really cool if Kolak just like gave him a little whack out of the air with his hammer. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't to be. And you can see just all the carnage going on in the background. They're still holding their own. Like The dwarves aren't just like breaking instantly or anything. No, the, the dragon well. ogre is undeterred completely. Yeah. Actually, if you check the like the unit health of all my units, like it's it's quite low for the Chosen, really low for the dragon ogres, and my Kolek himself is down to halfway uh, and taking more damage. So I activated um, an augment there, which speeds up my uh, manticore, which will allow me to catch the, the gyrobonger. in the sky yeah I love it that. looks so good when it goes down it sounds really good as well you can just hear the propellers like kind of giving out nicely done that is a, a well-used attribute there or, or a skill so I'm just kind of picking off who I can finishing off some routing units bringing the manticore back into the into the fray it's doing amazing charges into their units just ripping them apart basically 
Um, and this is kind of what you have to deal with when you're playing against Chaos or with them. Um, they're very, very strong and they're, they're quite scary, to be honest. I love seeing the dwarf fly past the camera. Yeah, they just, they're so little and <laughs> they just like fly by. Um, I did another final transmutation again, which is another direct damage spell. That was actually something that really helped me getting through in the beginning, uh, pushing through their lines. That damage spell is an area of effect spell, so you don't just target one unit, you target the area and anyone in it takes the damage. Um, so that kind of actually allowed me to hit five or six units at once. Very, very uh, lucky to get it off with the 50% with the miscast. See, it's kind of difficult to tell because it still looks like they've got so many units, but you can see the dwindling numbers of those units running away. Yeah, they've you got... still have so many left. Yeah, they've got lots of uh, kind of flags you can see as they're kind of... They back off and then they come back. They kind of reform quite a lot because Ungrim is actually fighting... Uh, I meant to, forgot to mention Ungrim Iron Fist. Here he is here getting up. He's after just being charged, but um, I kind of left him alone for a second. I'm going to bring in the Shagoth. <gasps> See who's going to win in this fight. Rear attack! Oh, mistake. To the dwarf, not you. Yeah. You did very well. Never turn your back to a Jack Shagger. Well, he took him down. <laughs> so that's but it. But he is the Slayer King, of course. He you is. Know? So he did pretty good. Also, I was told it's worth mentioning that the fact he didn't react when he got hit is because Legendary Lords, they do have some react animations for getting hit, but they don't always react because if they are constantly in their react state, um, they would never get an attack off. It's kind of like a stun lock animation. So. That's actually a, a, a choice made on purpose so that the gameplay just flows a little better and I was told to mention that by the devs. Yeah, not to the ground. Yeah, so it's basically just Ungrim left. Stubborn little guy doesn't want to break. Um, I just kind of kind of envelop him with everything I got. He's taken out, you know, the, the Shagoth and Colex pissed. Yeah, because, yeah. You know, that, uh, you know, it's probably his girlfriend or something. He didn't like that. Oh, you so, just surrounded him. I just, yeah, I just sending everything. The cavalry was a good move, yeah. I think, because you know he's he's obviously going to be a bit hardier against those larger units. Mm. Kolok actually has an, a bombard, uh, bombardment spell of his own um, that I, I call down as well. It's called Lord of the Storm. It only lasts like five seconds, and it's it doesn't cost any winds of magic. But that's what the animation there was, um, where he lifts the kind of axe of, or mace up in the air. Um, and that's it, Ungrim, Ungrim was finished off by that. Oh, you've done it! Yeah, so that's the victory. Well, congratulations for redeeming your uh, title of not losing every battle. Nice yeah. one, Darren. Thank you very much. Let us know what you think in the comments down below and let us know what you would like to see for future videos. Like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. See ya.